Mark. Anyone who grew up with YouTube in the late 2000s can tell you there were three main comedy channels that everybody watched. Annoying Orange, Smosh, and Fred. With... With, with a backwards R. These channels were immensely popular with each new video acquiring millions of views and looking back on them now... I don't want anyone to steal our food! Oh, and I wonder why he thought my voice was weird. Yeah, they were definitely a product of their time. But it's not surprising at all that young kids, like myself, were really into this kind of content and found it hilarious. No matter how repetitive it got. Well, all of these channels eventually broke out of the YouTube sphere and got the opportunity to create content for the film and television industry. Ian and Anthony got Smosh, the movie, which I've still not watched, and judging by the reviews, I don't think I ever need to watch it. The Annoying Orange got the incredibly short lived Cartoon Network series, The High Fructose Adventures of the Annoying Orange. Wait, 60 episodes? These ratings are better than most current shows too, what the hell happened here? Well anyways, arguably the most successful one of these endeavours was Fred, who received three movies and a Nickelodeon show. My first encounter with Fred was actually in another Nick show, iCarly. There was an episode trying to be hashtag hip and relatable with the kids, called I Meet Fred, and it was about one of the main characters of iCarly, Freddy, being tortured for 22 minutes because he didn't think that Fred was funny and apparently literally every single person on the planet except for him thinks Fred is hilarious. Up until Freddy is forced into liking Fred. And they all lived happily ever after. After that episode, I looked up the Fred channel and really enjoyed the stuff he made. If you've somehow never heard of Fred before, it's basically just random videos of Lucas putting on the persona of a crazy kid while speeding up the video to give himself a really annoying high-pitched voice. If you're wondering why I'm acting rather extraordinary right now, And it was the perfect time for me to get into him, because the very next year he would receive his very own theatrical film, Fred the Movie. Yes, I said theatrical. I watched this in cinemas, and I loved it. The title isn't a lie, I unironically really enjoy this movie despite its many, many, many flaws. They decide this weekend to make the weekends the week and the week with the weekend? That means we're gonna have five whole days off and only two days of school! Released in 2010, Fred the Movie was met with... less than stellar reviews. This kid simply has no talent. The kids from iCarly, for example, they have it. This YouTube star doesn't have it. Come on, I have it! If you want to have an experience akin to having your genitals put through a meat mincer, you have found a novelty in Fred the movie. Horrific in so many ways, it's a vicious, uncompromising, malevolent rape of the senses. Whomever had the idea of turning some penis-faced, prat-voiced, douches internet series into a film should be shot and shot. Okay, that's enough of that one. The plot of the movie is that Fred, played by Lucas Cruikshank, wants to try and get to his neighbour, the popular girl Judy's, so they can sing. It makes about as much sense as it sounds. But there's one slight problem in his plan. His own incompetence. Fred, to put it simply, is insane and overreacts to every situation he's put in. Uh, I'm here! Oh my damn, I dug all the way inside! Even with something as simple as taking the bus or getting his clothes clean, and Lucas does a brilliant job portraying this, almost too good of a job. Doing you? can't be naked in here. Get your butt out of here. It should be obvious that the biggest problem people have with this movie, and the brand as a whole, is Fred as a character. His annoying nature, with the pitch shifted voice, running around, constant screaming. Get away from me, spaceman! I will not let you ruin my brain! And I mean, constant screaming. And while it's easy to shit all over Lucas for creating this, he himself also looks back on Fred with shame. It's been years since Fred Figglehorn has attacked my ears. But it got popular for a reason. Kids like this kind of humour, and I'm not gonna lie and say I can never be amusing. This movie is really funny. Okay, well maybe not really funny. It's more... 
moderately funny, I guess. Occasionally there will be a random joke that catches me off guard and I can't help but laugh. Especially with the rare meta jokes. Why do people even watch other people on YouTube? It's weird! It's creepy! I don't get it! I don't know, these jokes along with the really awful editing that looks like it came from an actual YouTube video gives this movie an odd charm that I kind of love. I get Did you already moved?! Where to?! I don't know, they asked me to forward the mail. I Why didn't you tell me?! There's also a small variety of side characters like Fred's neighbour Kevin, who is always trying to prevent him from getting to Judy, Judy herself, who is played by Pixie Lot, Fred's neighbour Bertha, who does nothing the entire movie up until the very end, and the coolest, most edgy double-ganger, Durf. That's Fred backwards in case it was too clever for you. Lunch fail, man. Other than those guys, there are almost no other characters in the movie of any importance, and most of the film takes place in two to three main locations. It's clear that the budget was not high at all for this. There's a ton of dark undertones in here and I can't tell if they're intentional or not. Like Fred being so distraught about not knowing who his real dad is, that he has hallucinations of him being John Cena. Dad? What do you think I should do? Who then proceeds to beat him up. Or Fred's mum implying that he was an accident. How do you know him? We had a date once. I don't know, 15 years ago? I'm 15. I'm taking a nap. Or even how Fred has numerous hallucinations throughout the movie, to the point where reality and fiction starts to blend, and you can't tell if what's going on on screen is actually happening, or if Fred is just freaking out again. If they ran with this more, it could have led to a hilarious character study on a psychotic kid with no friends, a neglectful mother, and stalkerish tendencies. Instead, it follows this simple story to an incredibly safe and shallow, Fred gets the girl because he made everybody jealous, ending. He starts to build a nice connection with Bertha in the third act, so you'd think that I'd be going for the whole cliché, don't judge a book by its cover message, but nope. Instead it goes for a new message of judge books by their covers, and if that book ends up being a cunt, then read it anyway. The movie really falls apart in its third act. That's not to say it was ever solid before then, but anyway. Basically what happens is Fred finally gets to Judy's, where it's revealed she was having a party without him, and after getting humiliated, he has the genius idea of throwing a party and not inviting anyone. Oh, it looks like you got my message that you're not invited to my party! Sucker! To get back at everyone who laughed at him. But because Bertha also didn't get invited to Judy's party, he invites her, and they end up having a great time. And they also make a music video with mannequins and props to make people think that they threw the best party ever, making them jealous. And I think this could have been a great way to end this movie, if Fred failed. Nobody likes Fred. He does nothing in this movie that makes him even somewhat likeable. So if Fred's final attempt to spite everyone failed miserably, and it ended with everyone still thinking that he was a weird loser, then it would have been hilarious. But no, everyone is jealous and tries to be friends with him. The end. Oh, it was an epic fail of me not to go to Fred's. I know I haven't been entirely positive towards this movie, but overall I definitely wouldn't call it unbearable. I think going into it knowing about Fred's history can make this a really fun experience, especially with friends. It's a very enjoyable time. I've watched this film like five times and would happily do it again. After this, Fred would get two more films, although they were only TV movies. And yeah, they were both awful. Not even I will defend those movies. And a television series, which I would actually like to talk about by itself someday, so I'll leave it at that. And now in the year of 2019, we know that iCarly predicted the future, because Fred is dead. And it's clear he's never coming back. Fred has been dead for who knows how long. But that's a good thing. I'd much prefer that than have it go on for years until it gets so stale that not even the creator wants anything to do with it. <laughs> Fred was simply a product of its time. And I can't really fault it for that. And Lucas can make fun of these cringy videos he's made in the past and mock the entire Fred brand. But if I'm being honest, it's a lot more entertaining than watching shitty reaction videos and try not to blank challenges.